Uh, well, let me just start the recording. So I yes. Think, okay, we're, we're recording now. Uh, yeah, so I think, let me see. I think the question was, um, like, how often should you up, upgrade often your should laptop? You upgrade your laptop. And then something about, would it, you be saving time, I think? Getting a faster yeah. laptop? Yeah, let me, let me pull it up. And if this doesn't sound good, I can always start the recording later <laughs> let me that just good, yeah. let me see um oh yeah it's okay so the question is how often should i upgrade my laptop yeah yeah and how much time would i save if i got a faster computer yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what do you think yeah. So I, I do like the first question. Second question, like I could definitely add to it, but I feel like there's a lot of like overlap between that question and the second question. Cause like, I'm, I'm definitely, I can talk about fast laptops. I can, like, I kind of know like where I want to like take the conversation for sure. Cause I'm basing it around mainly the first question. Like we're thinking about like how long you want to, when do you want to upgrade it next? You think about like probably longevity. It's kind of like based on personal preference. So you kind of want to think about like, what do you want out of a laptop? Are you just the guy that'll, you know, just surf the, surf the World Wide web and use email and maybe play the odd games here and there, something like that. Then you can probably invest in like a laptop that you, you, you'd think would last maybe five to eight years. And you have to consider a lot of things, you know, the specs, if it, if the way that the laptop's built is really gonna, you know, last and, like I can, I have a great example for my laptop. Like it's literally on the verge of collapsing as we speak. Like the frame is, I don't know if you can see this. Do you see, do you see, the, you see my laptop, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you see the frame right there? Yeah. It's like popping out. You see that? <laughs> yeah. And like this does not close and I have to rest it up against something as you can see. So like my biggest the biggest thing i'm looking for is obviously like a powerhouse laptop but something that's going to last and isn't going to collapse after four five, four, five years so, so what's what's going to be the breaking point for you or you got a new one um the second it just feels a lot slower than usual like it's got a legit processor and the ram is like it's not 16 gigs but it's eight gigs so it's pretty fast yeah but like, i can still run applications pretty well like I think the more I the more applications I run, I don't find the laptop lagging as much as like you'd expect an eight-year laptop to lag. But I feel like once it gets to the point where like let's say I'm running simply mail, Netflix, and something else, and it's just going haywire and it has to run all this code and takes forever, then yeah, most likely I'm I'm looking for a laptop even now. But it's like I'm also saving and thinking, okay, like I can still hold off because you know the guts of this laptop are still so solid. It's like a tank, but again, like I can't bring it anywhere with me. I don't have a sleeve for a laptop anyways. And even if I did, like it's probably gonna the laptop has like all these small little parts like any laptop. It's gonna it's going to end up in the bottom of the bag probably. I don't know what the hell is falling out of this thing at the end of the day. <laughs> Every time I lift it, you know, it's, something's bound to happen. So it's uh, obviously, it depends on the, the consumer and the user and what they deem the breaking point then, that which, you know, it's like, hey, it's time to get one. I think the, the biggest point is like speed. If it's not fast enough. I think it's time, honestly. Yeah. It's, it's that, yeah. There's a, there's a lot you can take. I, I feel like you can take this anywhere, this conversation. Um, but yeah, Dude. I can start with, there's so many laptops I can talk about off the top of my head. Do you, what kind of laptop do you use for work? For work? Let's see what it is. It's a HP. HP? Okay. Yeah. Have you ever used like a ThinkPad before for any, for any of your previous jobs? Yeah, yeah, I have. They're pretty sweet. Yeah. So I would say like, Simply, if you're looking for a laptop that, again, can do what you're normally looking to do, internet, email, and you're looking for the last maybe like five years and you're like, hey, I'm ready to get a new laptop, or you just want that whole concept of getting one every five years because maybe you want something that looks a little bit different or just a different experience overall, I think a ThinkPad is perfect. Like I have, a, right now I'm using a T450, which is I think like anything below a T450. If you, if you don't understand the names, it's fine. I barely understand what they are, but I know T450 to T480, those are like solid laptops. And I've used all four models throughout previous jobs. What's the, what's the rough price range for those? For those? So again, you could get them on Kijiji for those $200. And like my dad has so many of them in, like in our house. We, 
we've gone, gone through so many. I found myself maybe using, I've had three ThinkPad laptops in like high school, but like they were used for different things mainly. And they were like other people's too. Yeah. But like, honestly, you could have a ThinkPad spend $200 to last you 300 for three years. And then you can get another one again for $200. Like, I feel like if you're just looking for something cheap and just to do, you know, again, internet email, you can get a ThinkPad, last you three years, get another one for, you know, you're not going to break the bank just by constantly getting them. And again, they're durable. How, how is it so cheap? You can get them used, but again, you're going to have to go, you know, to the seller, make sure that they're, they're decent, you know, it's a decent condition. I'm talking about used. I should mention that, but like you can get a decently used ThinkPad for as low as 200. I think my brother, when he went, I think when he was in grade 11, he, we went, we met a guy at Yorkdale. He was selling a T4. I think it was a 60. And that was in 20, I think it was 2014. So at the time it was a good laptop and it was fine. There weren't so many issues with it. It lasted him, I think two and a half years. So up until like maybe second year university or end of first year. And then again, he got himself another ThinkPad and it was perfect for another three years leading up to end of university. So I feel like it, again, it depends on the person. If the person doesn't want to break the bank and they don't mind getting a new laptop every four years, I think a ThinkPad is perfect. Like, and again, you can, T450, T48, those are just examples, but there's so many other ThinkPads. You can, there's like, there's ones that um that flip like the 360 thing it's called the yoga i hear those are really good those i know a lot of people at my work at td use them right now they're perfect laptops they're durable they're light they weigh i think under two pounds probably like a pound something pound under pound pound, pound, pound and a half maybe um yeah i i have no complaints with them honestly like if i didn't have this this lenovo i have a, a lenovo i think it's called like an idea pad something 300 3000 or something idea pad 3000 if i didn't get this i got this in 2012 just before university i would have easily i think on the think pad i think it was a tie between those two honestly because again if, if if you're a university student what are you looking to do besides you know using word word office like general office you know programs email and then you know, unless you're like a media student or like a music into music production, I have a bunch of laptops. I think I think of right off the top of my head that are perfect for those kind of functions that you're looking for. But again, if you're like a university student, again, this laptop that I have, it was perfect for four years. By year five, having this laptop, that's when I noticed that all the plastic parts of the laptop started to wear off. So that's when the frames started to pop out of the screen and stuff like that. So again, that's a that was something I learned. I'm like, okay, next laptop I'm going to get, I'm going to look for metal hinges and not these stupid plasticky ones that just kind of popped out after four years. So again, this is perfect for four years in university. But again, if you're looking, if you're a guy that wants something, you're looking to spend, let's say 1500 and you're saying, okay, I want to get bang for my buck. I want it to last like six plus seven plus years you can get so many things you can get right now i with the research i've done i'm really into the razor it's called the razor razor blade stealth those are really nice laptops they're like i want to say like the windows version of like a mac almost it's like sleek it's got all these cool kind of like colors that the macs have like the space gray or whatever odd white color shades that the, the macs have but as far as like durability i think it's it's like a brick like any of the macbooks are you a macbook user or are you like uh yeah, I'm I'm MacBook. Um, mine is six years old, and I I just bought one actually. I bought a new one a few no days way. ago. A yeah. Mac. Yeah, but I'm curious. Mm -hmm. So between so we're like for fifteen hundred bucks, how would you have you ever used Mac? So I've I've used it for other people, but I don't. I've never owned one personally. No. Okay. And I know it's like very consumer experience. Like it's kind of like wrapped up in a whole fancy package and it's really user friendly. That that's what I really know about it. And all the little gestures you can do, those are all really cool. And I know longevity wise, those things can last. Like I, like we have friends that have, that have my Apple laptops for like since 2012 and they still run really well. Yeah. I think it really depends. What do you, what do you think about the, uh, the Chromebooks? So I was actually going to get into it. Um, I, I think, again, if you're looking to just simply surf the web, I think that's perfect for you. If you're looking to simply, I think even like, think for elderly people straight up, like my grandparents personally, like they don't have laptops, any of that stuff, but they'd love to, you know, replace the newspaper with the internet. I think Chromebooks are perfect for that because again, it's simple. That's exactly what you're looking for, for a laptop to do. Just simply run 
run the internet. Um, I like the Google Pixel book. Um, I think that's a perfect Chromebook, honestly. Uh, there's one called, so there's this, the Pixel book Slate, but I've, I've actually chosen the Pixel book Go. I think that's a little bit of a, a better Chromebook. I don't think the Pixel book Slate is a Chromebook, really. I think it's more of a laptop. But the Go is is exactly, again, exactly what you're looking for. It's simply surf the internet. It weighs like under two pounds. It's got all the ports I think you're looking for. It's got like a USB. A, again, it depends on what kind of user you are and what kind of other tech that you have. But it's got two USB-C ports. It runs, like the camera is actually pretty good. I don't know. I heard that the MacBook cameras aren't that great. Can you say anything on that? Because I know that they're like under two megapixels or something. I agree. They're definitely one of the worst things about it. I don't know That's why. I don't know why they yeah. haven't improved it. Yeah. But yeah, that was one of the things I was because I wasn't sure what to get with the new one. Like I wanted to get a new one because I was finding this one was just too slow for doing Zoom calls like this, and even oh yeah, like even like Google searching at the same time, it was just lagging a lot of times. Um, yeah. So anyways, I was deciding between either like a Mac or a PC or a Chromebook. Um, what? Yeah, but I agree with you. One of, the, one of the things that I was looking at is just, I almost didn't get it just because the webcam is just not good. Yeah. Is this the new, you got a newer Mac, like a Pro or an Air? I got an Air. Um, okay. Yeah, I got it's 2020 the or 19? Air 2020. Okay. Um, I got it because it was like quite a bit cheaper and apparently yeah. like that one got the air got refreshed this year. The pro got refreshed last yeah. year yeah. and apparently the air, it uses like a new Intel, their latest, latest gen processor. So it's actually faster than the pro. I think it's an I seven from what I remember, or it could be an, I, I know that the pros now, the new pros, they, they run an I nine processor, but I think that's like the 16 inch one. I think yeah, the Mac, the is Mac Pro, the 13 inch, I think it starts at an i5. You can upgrade to like maybe i7 yeah. or i9. Yeah. The MacBook Air is i3, i5, i7. So okay. it starts at the i3. I got an yeah. i5. It's like a quad core i5. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So that should last you for a while. But yeah, I was looking at the Chromebook because you can get a Chromebook for, for, re for de really good prices. Yeah. 300 bucks new. Yeah. yeah and. Yeah. I was thinking, like, what what apps do you think, like, you can't do these days on the internet? Because I think of, like, Microsoft Office, and you can use now yeah. Google Docs, Google Sheet. Yeah. I feel like, again, if you're looking to do something that other than those functions you just mentioned, and, again, I've already said this, like, music production or, like, anything with, like, video if you're like, if you want to make videos and, you know, import them into your laptop, you're definitely going to need a laptop with a, like a really good processor, uh, yeah. really high gigabytes of RAM. Um, but I think honestly, like that could also dictate like how long it'll last. I'm not necessarily saying if you get an i3 processor, it's going to last you a year and then it's going to die on you. Not necessarily at all. Yeah. But what I'm, tr what I'm really trying to say is you want to get something that's based on what you're looking to do on the laptop. If you're again doing simply internet email, I think an i5. I don't. I don't suggest recommend i3, but anything i5 and up, I think is perfect. Currently, with like the current hardware that we have, i5s are perfect. Eventually, once they bring up, if there's going to be an i11, the i5 will be like the i3, and the i7 will be like the i5, for sure. Do you think? Do you think eventually? Do you think all apps are going to be available to be done on the internet? Like for instance, you used to have to have Microsoft office. Now you can just get away with Google docs, Google yeah. sheets and yeah. video, video editing you brought up. I think there are online video editing things that you could do on a Chromebook. Maybe it's just going to be slow because the processor right. is just not, but For I sure. wonder if like all these apps are going to be just available online. Well, I feel like a lot of them are. I think it just depends on how big these applications are and whether you can like really, if your app, laptop's able to download them, and, yeah. you know, work on those applications. Like, it again, really depends. Again, I know I don't know a lot about Chromebooks, but I know simply for if you're looking to just you know be on the internet for like nine to ten plus hours or ten hours or something, 
all day and you're going, let's say, from one coffee shop to an hour to another, it's perfect. Perfect yeah. laptop from what I know. And it's durable. They're small. And I know that, like, for example, the Google Pixel Book Go I've looked at, the camera and the mic is, like, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Like, I think it's better than the Macs I've looked into. But I know even the Macs, they, they just improved the microphone as well, right? Uh, like, have you noticed that with the new one that you've got? I didn't get it yet. I ordered it ordered a few days ago and because all the stores are closed. The shipping is yeah. kind of long. I think it's going to come in like two or three weeks. Oh, damn. But uh, honestly, like for I've done all my podcasts through my laptop. Or a lot of them I've done through the laptop just with like yeah. Apple headphones like these. And I feel like the sound quality is usually pretty good. But it yeah, really it would be yeah. sweet if it's better. I heard great. that they're supposed to be better. I don't know. I saw. I don't know if you know Marquise Brown on YouTube. He does all that yeah. tech, all the tech reviews and stuff. He recorded on the new. I think it was the MacBook Air, and it just the the, the audio sounded so different from when he's actually recording himself doing the review. But from doing it off the laptop, it sounded so odd. But he said it's, an, it's a, like bad, but it's a step up from the original model or something from the previous year's model. So uh -oh. it's a I hope I hope it's a it's, I hope it's at least as good as my because I have a MacBook Pro now. It's got to be six better. years old. It's got to be better. But I mean, like you can't compare it to like speaker, like any like quality, like with a mic that you have right right up against. Because I'm sure he uses a mic, so it really yeah. depends on what kind of application, what, what you've got, what kind of hardware you've got, really. Yeah. But it's I don't know. Chrome Chromebooks are really good for that. Um, and yeah, I, th I think they should last you pretty long, again, depending on what kind of processor you have. But I, know, I don't know about all Chromebooks, but I know for the Google Pixel Book Cro like Go, they got no, it has no fans. It doesn't like, the speakers are really good, but like no fans, I think, is a pretty good like pro for any kind of laptop. Just the whole idea that you, know, you don't have any problem with any overheating or any, any problems with the temperature of the laptop and it's not you know grilling your thighs if you're putting on your thighs it's amazing that's which perfect. one which one doesn't have fans the google book uh, the google pixel book go it's oh, got no cool. fans underneath so that's i think that that's again perfect for like traveling and just surfing the net i think chromebooks are pretty are really good for that cool. um yeah I, I, again i think just if you're looking at something if you're looking for a laptop that's going to last you a long time and again, with my laptop, I have an i7 processor. I think it has eight gigs of RAM. And again, if you just, and funny enough, okay, you start up, if you start up my Windows, you let it run for like 20 minutes. After that 20 minute mark, that's when it's able to run applications well. So obviously, like any laptop that's over five years, you're going to get some drawbacks. But yeah. like for the whole idea that like it can still run applications really well after the 20, 20 like minute mark run, and like it, it runs everything perfectly, doesn't slow down. I think the processor and the RAM really dictates how long the laptop's gonna last. But MacBooks, I know for a fact, like I, I know plenty of people with i like Macs with i5 processors, and those have lasted them for like again six plus seven plus years. Really do depends. Think, do you think Mac will eventually, or Apple will eventually allow Macs to get their parts upgraded? See, with the whole Apple philosophy and the whole idea of like, in the whole fandom of it, like they always restrict the user so that with like certain features so they can implement them on like the newer, the newer products or the newer versions. And they do it obviously because everything's like a cash grab for them. So I don't think they necessarily would at all in any case. Um, it's actually a really good question. I don't think they would. Um, but I know pl like, for example, the razor blade that I mentioned before, the stealth. 15 that one you can actually literally change the video card the sound card you can change the i think even the ram too so again if you're looking for if you're like one of those handy guys that would much rather you know use a wind because with windows there's so much more freedom than a, a mac but again i'm a little bit biased towards that i know with a lot of mac users they like you know the whole like how it's packaged how consumer friendly it is how user friendly it is um i think it really depends on the person but like i feel like with all the people the mac users that have macs for so many years i don't think that's a really a big drawback that you can't really upgrade the laptop and add certain things to it because again those users those guys most likely get the next version anyways so but it, it's definitely good again if you're looking to save money and not spend a, a new mac buy a new mac every single year 
I think something like the razor blade is perfect, but you can find, again, this is like a $2,300 laptop. You can find something a lot cheaper that has yeah. that same function where you can upgrade it and change it up. Um, again, it just depends on what you're looking for and how much you're willing to spend. But there's plenty of laptops under the 1500 mark. There's like the Dell XPS 13. There's a bunch of Dells, but I, I've seen this one all over the internet right now and all the reviewers have been talking about this one. This one is really good because, again, it, I feel like this one can, can last you a long time. Like with the whole idea that I have of, you know, if you have a, a pretty current processor and at least eight gigs of RAM, you shouldn't have any problems with the laptop's performance and how fast it's running certain applications and whatnot. Like this Dell one has, again, i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM. Um, I don't know how, are you big into like hard drive capacity and how much you can hold? Like, are you, are you into like... Are you looking for that in a laptop? What do you look for in, in storage usually? So I, I, feel, I feel like I kind of want to store everything online. Okay. Like so I, have, I have an external hard drive that I put yeah. like pic, pictures and stuff on and files. Yeah. But the more I was thinking about it, like wouldn't, wouldn't you want to have everything on Google Drive or something? Because yeah. worst, yeah, worst case hopefully it never happens. But like if, if your house was to burn down or something, yeah. like you're, you're going to lose it if it's on your laptop or on your external hard drive, right? Hard drive, yeah. yeah, no, the accessibility is definitely the biggest draw for any cloud-based products, your Google drive, your, your, your Apple cloud or whatever that one's called. Um, those are perfect for, that's what, that's what I was just going to say with, with hard drives. I don't think it really necessarily matters. Which really do you think, depends which do you on think the is thing. safer if you're trying to like protect the information? Like let's say you have, you have family photos you you never want to yeah. lose. Yeah. You think it's safer to have it on an external hard drive or have it in the cloud? And where so I'm I going with this, where I'm going with this, where yeah. I'm going with this really quick is yeah. like the external hard hard drive could break or yeah. could get yeah. destroyed in like a fire or something. But on the flip side, I don't think there's been any, been any like cases yet where Dropbox or Google has like lost a lot of files, but I, I imagine they could have like Probably. technical issues. I don't yeah, know. and security issues too. Security issues, yeah. Um, again, I guess, I guess it really depends on the person. For me personally, I I think just the whole accessibility of the cloud and just being able to simply put things on there, it's perfect. Never really thought so much of security. But again, if you're like an old school guy that doesn't like these cloud-based systems, and forget about, you know, if, if, the, if your external hard drive is bound to break or, you know, you're concerned about, you know, getting it getting caught in a fire or whatever, I think external hard drives are perfectly fine too. Yeah. Like I've had, I, I have so many external hard drives with hundreds and hundreds of movies and like they're still around. I still have them. I still plug them into my PS3 and watch movies off of it. Like it still works fine. I personally don't have an issue with hard drives. Um, and again, no really issue with, with the cloud system either. I think, again, personal preference. But I, again, I use both. And that's why for hard drives for me, it's not a big deal. Um, anything, ideally higher than like 250 gigs would be good. But like anything lower than 250, I think it's... I don't think there are any laptops that are under 256 gigs. And ideally, I think you'd probably want to get, you know, like solid... You'd probably want to get a solid state. Then like, Because my laptop currently, I think it's an H it's like a hard it's a hard disk drive and I don't know if if these if there are any laptops that have that kind of hardware anymore I like think they're all solid state now the MacBook Air still starts at 128 it's solid state but it's solid state yeah actually I'm oh, sorry the the pro the pro still starts at 128 the air that they refresh this year starts at 256 so that's mm -hmm. what I got yeah should be fine cuz I'm going to keep most stuff in the cloud exactly Again, I think as long as the laptop has a solid state, solid state hard drive, you, you can't go wrong with memory. And again, you're basing, you're basing it off of the fact that you're still going to take what you have, throw it on the cloud, it's not going to matter. But you, you're going to definitely want a solid state drive and not what I currently have on my laptop, which again, I don't think it matters. But solid states, they run faster. They, again, with, if you're keeping longevity in mind, you're gonna, you should get a solid state drive because they last longer, for sure. Back on the... Uh... Yeah the apple not allowing upgrades piece yeah do you think they're gonna get pressured to allow it just because of the environmental aspect of like wasting essentially because 
I would imagine it's more environment, environmentally friendly to just upgrade the pieces versus getting a new laptop every time, right? New hardware. Yeah, I, I think so too, honestly, because at the end of the day, <laughs> Apple, but either way, Apple will still be producing these laptops. I think, and again, I don't want to sound biased, but I think with the whole Apple consumer, you know, fandom of what it is, I think people aren't going to really care to, to upgrade it because it's, it, the fact that the way it's packaged and everything, everybody wants, you know, every year to, you know, open up a nice white box with like these nice edges and just lift them up and see this nice, everybody likes it. All these Apple people, consumers like that. So I get it. If they do ever have the idea to, you know, consider giving people the ability to change graphics cards, hard drive, whatever, and open up that kind of world, that would be a first for Apple, honestly. First off, I think it would be revolutionary for them. But at the same time, I think even if they were to do it, they would really dumb it down. Like they'd say, hey, we can op- you can open up the hardware, but you can only change the sound card or you can only change the video card. So they'll, I know we, they'll probably do something like that. But I feel like they haven't run out of ideas right now with their laptops to the point where they're considering opening up that realm of saying, hey, you can open up your, the bottom of your laptop and change whatever you want now. I, I think that's going to be a while. I think Apple doesn't have any any means to be doing that yet really have you have you seen any laptops that are entirely touchscreen um including the keyboard yeah so i do and i forgot what laptop this was it was on um again on youtube i don't know if you've heard of boxing therapy boxing and therapy unbox therapy or something Yeah. yeah unboxing therapy he uh showcased a laptop that had um so with the Max, they have the new touch screen little thing on like right above the keyboard, but it's like a thin, thin kind of slivered row right above. And it's like for, for easy functions, I think for scrolling or whatever. But I saw this laptop that, this, that the guy on YouTube had where it was like half the bottom of, this, of the panel with the keyboard was the keyboard. And then like closer where the screen was, there was like another probably like a, let's say three, four inch like screen, like a monitor. And you can take any windows that you have on your current screen and drag them onto like that, that smaller screen right below your keyboard. I've seen those before. Just see, I think seeing, it's really cool. I don't know. I think it's really cool, but I feel like in the long run, that thing is bound to wear, wear and tear like, like big time. I think, and again, I don't know what the pixel rates are for those little screens right above the keyboard, but I feel like they'll probably wear on you after like three, four years. Maybe good enough for, again, university, but after four years, I feel like that's going to wear off. I don't know the specs of that small little portion of that screen. It looks cool. Functionality, I feel like it, if, if you're you know, using so many different tabs and windows, it's perfect for that. But in the long run, I don't, I don't see the relevance of it, really. I, don't, I, don't, I find that it's probably going to wear down pr- pretty quick after again three years it's hard to say but they look cool honestly they're cool i don't know if they're going to be showcasing more laptops like that in the future um i feel like it's a pretty new thing so i don't know but it's cool i don't know it's it's interesting it's interesting where where innovation's going for sure because i I was just thinking like blackberry replaced uh, sorry iphone replaced blackberry yeah and all all the cell phones used to have like a physical keyboard. keyboard. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I guess they realized it's better to have like more screen estate, right? Like have more yeah. more room for the screen and just make a touch screen. Like but that hasn't translated over to laptops over to laptop. yet. So I was just looking right now and there's something called the Lenovo Yoga Book, which is maybe what you're talking about, which is essentially yeah. it's a laptop that both are both are touch screens, but it yep. looks like it's discontinued. So oh, okay. I think maybe it didn't, didn't make it, but yeah, I wonder like, do you, so you don't think, you don't think the future will be like entirely touch screen. I don't know. I he, see my biggest issue with it is sure. Like when you're actually typing on a, on a, on a phone, it's because it's so compact. I feel like the whole, idea of actually typing it it doesn't bother most people but i feel like if you translate it to a laptop it might be a little bit different just because a lot of people i feel like they expect like haptic feedback like legit like recognition of like if you're pressing a letter you can the laptop recognizes it like and you recognize it too 
I feel like that experience is going to be hard maybe in the beginning to develop like a fully touch screen QWERTY keyboard like that. Maybe they'll have to develop, maybe they can take on, you know, whatever technology they've used from the QWERTY keyboard on the iPhones or whatever Android where, you know, it vibrates every time you touch a key. Maybe that'll work on a laptop, but I, I don't know. Has, I don't even know if that's ever been done before. And even to that extent, I, I, for me personally, I'd rather have something more physical, but again, it, things could definitely change. Maybe advances could could make it seem like so cool to have this touch screen to the point where it just feels like you have a physical QWERTY keyboard. Maybe they can emulate that. I don't know, but yeah, no, it's interesting because technology. Yeah, because I I feel like what you're talking about was the same debate that happened when iPhone first came versus BlackBerry, and it's people the, people oh, were yeah. saying people were saying stuff like, oh, it's it's not going to be as fast to type on, sure. on a touch screen versus sure. a physical keyboard. For sure. And I feel like this is similar, but I, I just wonder why it never ha- never, or why it hasn't really happened yet. Um, I feel like maybe from a hardware perspective, it's really hard to accomplish that. Maybe I have no clue. Um, yeah. Again, you also have to think about, yeah, you've got a touch screen, but you also have to think about the pixels and, the durability of that and sure yeah. you're, you're tapping away. I don't know how different, because again, with a QWERTY keyboard on a, on a, on a phone, I don't notice any drawbacks to, you know, typing to the point where, you know, it feels a little bit different or the point where just like, it, like I don't have, I don't have anything negative about it. And again, I don't know how they're going to translate it over, but I feel like the hardware is going to be totally different. Again, pixel rates. I don't know how it's going to look like to have a QWERTY keyboard on a screen Will the pixels hold up every time you type on them? I don't know. I I, I have no clue how that's gonna work. So it's it's interesting. I'm gonna I'm gonna check out this this Lenovo yoga book after and try to figure out like I'm gonna watch some of the reviews and see why it never yeah. took off. No, I'm really interested too. Um again, do you, they do you know the be... backstory on the QWERTY keyboard? No, what's the backstory? So I was just reading this book recently called Guns, Germs, and Steel. Um it's mm-hmm. talking about like the history of of human civilization and stuff. Anyways, right. they they mention I don't know why they brought it up, but they brought up the the QWERTY keyboard and the origin of it. And pretty much we used to have um so like before lap before computers there were typewriters. Yeah. And uh when you typed too fast on the typewriter it got jammed. Right. So they purposely designed a keyboard that was like super inefficient and like the keys that you most commonly wanted to press were far apart right. to slow yeah, it yeah. down and avoid we'll it see. from jamming and that's jamming. the qwerty that's the qwerty keyboard and so apparently mm-hmm. apparently like there's a configuration of the keyboard that of a keyboard that would be like way faster than the one we use today but it's just it's never like gotten adopted Right. Does that make sense? But I just thought that was crazy that like essentially the keyboard we use today is like nowhere near the optimal right form formation. It's just because of the legacy reason that that it used to get jammed on the typewriter. That's how we ended up with this keyboard. Right. And again, like regardless of the fact that it, sure it it might be outdated and you know you can find a different variation of keys that cre- can create a better output than the QWERTY. But again, if people can still write you know let's say 50 no what is it over 100 words yeah. a minute that's pretty that's Fast pretty enough. impressive i feel like that's enough i don't think you need to reconfigure the keyboard then like if it holds up it holds up really at the end of the day you know yes natty but what if you could type at 200 words a minute that'd be, <laughs> that'd be great i don't know i don't know a scenario where I, would, I would need to i write emails at probably 80 words a minute and I'm fine with that. So again, personal preference. But for me, I'm not uh, looking to key in stuff constantly, so it's not a big concern for me. But yeah, that's fair. Man, it's that's really interesting, though. That's really interesting. It makes sense because even now that I think about it, like, yeah, okay, certain vowels are in different. Yeah, no, it, it makes a lot of sense because you do have to reach for different keys. But again, it still works. It works fine. Do you do you think voice control will significantly take over and replace typing like how often do you use voice on your phone or i don't know if your laptop has that no it doesn't i wish no it doesn't um again i feel like 
voice recognition and using it. It's it's really cool, really convenient, but I don't see like how you can rely on it on the long term. Like for example, my Google Pixel, I squeeze the edges of the phone and then Google Assistant comes and talks and whatever. I've had the phone for maybe two years. After maybe a year and a half, I noticed certain things I would try and say to the phone, it wouldn't work. So I feel like, it, it, again, really useful. I don't think in the long term it'll, it would be like, you would constantly rely on it. I, I think it would be pretty much, it, it wouldn't, for the functionality and what you'd be looking for, constantly asking certain things, sure, it'll probably work for like what, what it's currently doing and it's current, you know, hardware like how it can operate but again a couple years down the road it can definitely fade off and it might not be able to do the things that you wanted it to do when you first asked it things and i don't think you should necessarily always rely on that honestly like again i have like a, a like a good mix between using that you know voice recognition and physically searching stuff up or physically doing stuff that i don't want to that I wouldn't actually ask google assistant so i think it really depends but again it's I feel like that kind of technology, it's kind of like it'll wear down the more you use it. So I feel like it's, again, for a year, it's probably really nice. But after that year mark, I, I, I don't know if it holds up really. So it's, it's hard to say. I, I, I would have thought, isn't it, isn't it going to get better over time? Like as, as they improve the algorithms it picks and up it, everything, it picks up, you know, your, your voice tone and how you say certain things. Yeah, sure. But I mean, like, for the actual hardware of your phone, I feel like the older the phone is, the less chance it, it will be able to process all the commands that you ask Google Assistant to do. Again, oh, okay. like I've asked my phone to play songs on Spotify. First year I had the phone, had no problems doing that. Now when I ask the phone to play something on Spotify through my car, it'll play a totally different song or won't play anything at all. So it, it depends. Again, it's the hardware, it's like the communication of the hardware with the actual technology you need, like both of them to be really current, I think. And the older your phone is, I think the least capable will be able to handle all those voice commands that you ask it to do. So it's, it's tough, you know. There's also the issue of you're just not going to use voice generally yeah, when, you're in public, when you're in public. Like if you're in the office, you're not going to be yeah, using exactly. voice or when you're on the subway or walking For sure. around. For sure. What do, you, what do you think about, have you seen, have we ever talked about Neuralink? Have you seen Neuralink? No, I don't think I've seen, I know roughly it has to do with like connecting to your, like your brain and like yeah. some sort of feedback with that. Yeah. It's like, like it's like a brain machine interface. It like taps into your brain, brain right. and essentially can like, rec it's like the tech's not ready yet. Yeah. And like I think people debate whether or not it'll like when it'll be ready or if it'll ever kind of pan out. And I, I don't think this is what their focus is right now, but I could imagine like if it works, then maybe it just like your thoughts just get translated. Like you don't yeah, have to type really it. You just think it and it goes. Same. Yeah. I, th I think that's crazy. Um, <laughs> again, I think the hardware has to be like top notch for you to do that. Like you can't just rely on like, let's say if, if a computer could do that and whenever you hook it up to your brain, I feel like after, again, a year or whatever, maybe even six months, like was, we don't even know this technology. Maybe it'll be good for like three months. Maybe you can work on the laptop for three months and then the hardware just kind of fizzles out because it just can't handle all that input that you're asking it to do and it just can't output everything that you want, right? So it's really, it's, it's man, it's like, th think of like just, what was it, 25 years ago, we were using, people were using like rotary phones to get into the internet. It's the same kind of dilemma we're having now. It's a huge jump, right? You're getting from, you know, simply accessing things that you want to do in a laptop and using a keyboard, maybe even using your voice to jumping into, you know, your brain reading your, that's a jump. That's a jump, like using rotary phones to having wireless routers. I think that's a jump for sure. And I think, you know, I think that's a, that's a bigger jump. It's a, it's a <laughs> huge, yeah, no, a bigger jump and a bigger jump would, is going to mean like top notch hardware for sure. And I'm sure once they're developing it and they're in the starting stages, they're going to have machinery that probably won't last for a very long time. And again, it's going to be trial and error and then we'll have to be using top notch hardware to, to create that output for sure. It's going to be, I don't know how many years in the making, maybe 10 years, maybe 20, but it's, that's a jump. That's a huge jump. Like you said, it's a bigger jump from rotary to, to routers. So I don't, I don't see, I don't know when that would happen. Where did you see that again? So you can Neuralink. They hadn't, they've been, 
well, it's Elon Musk's startup, and okay. he oh, okay. uh, he didn't. They hadn't released much about it until uh, like just under a year ago, and then they did a uh, a presentation on their progress. It's pretty cool. I think it's an hour or two long on YouTube. You can search like Neuralink launch event. But anyways, when you search them on Google, right. their headline says developing ultra high bandwidth brain machine interfaces to connect humans and computers. That's crazy. That's like, that's the step of, again, I don't know anything about microchips and people always talk about microchips, putting them in, you know, your body and, you know, you can, it, it'll, you know, that's technology and human, the human body integrated. That's like the equivalent of that. But see, I don't know when that technology would ever exist. And what about AI? We can even get into AI too. Like that's something that, you know, it's like in the same realm of that. That's a jump. It's a huge jump. And yeah. it's, it's really tough to dictate when that's going to happen. But I don't know. Neuralink is cool, though. That's really cool. One, but I, one, even like, I remember when I was like in high school, and obviously this is totally different from that, but you, there, there was a program where I don't know who, who had it, someone in my high school. You could basically talk to the laptop and it'll type to you. It'll type everything that you're saying. So that, again, it's not the equivalent of it reading your brain, but you can find kind of like certain, equi not equivalents, but certain things that, you know, could do kind of what you like. Certain, like, the whole idea of Neuralink, that's cool, but you can find something a little bit dumber down and it can still kind of do the same thing almost. So you can find almost the equivalent, but I wouldn't say it's the equivalent. But I, that's pretty cool to talk to a laptop and it types for you. That's kind of cool too, honestly, if, if you're lazy as hell. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to type. It's perfect, but well, again, is it's... is Google Assistant built into into? I assume it's built into their Pixel Book and stuff. It in their Pixel Book, yeah. I know that like the, the so it, it's the same thing with like your Mac and your iPhone. Those are if you have both products, they work seamlessly together. It's the same thing with the the Google Pixel and the Google Pixel Book. They run really well together. They work really well together. Um, yeah, I, I feel like the assistant. I think it's like seamless. Like you can use it on on your Google put Pixel Book, and it can probably feed everything that you're asking onto your phone, and vice versa. Like it can do like integration. I think is it's really well done. And it's the same with again your iPhone, your Mac, and your your tablets too. Yeah. So it, I guess it really depends. I don't know how's Siri for you. Like, do you do you find yourself using Siri? I don't, uh, I don't use it much. I find. When I had a, a Google phone before, when I had a Pixel, I used it more. I feel yeah. I feel like the Google Assistant is further ahead in terms of okay. its accuracy versus yeah. Siri. Um, I've been trying to set up Siri. I'm trying to think what I would use it for. Like, um, like if I'm cooking and my hands are dirty, and I think of oh, I need to remember to like yeah. to put my stuff in the dryer, my laundry in the dryer. Right, right. Like I'd want to like just be able to say like, "Hey Siri, like add this reminder." That's like one use case, but I find I don't have too many use cases where I use Siri. I have Google Home, which which yeah. we use often for the weather's the main thing. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and then I think I I use that a lot for like asking Siri. Sorry, asking Google. Um, like how long different things last in the fridge. I feel like yeah. I use that a lot. <laughs> that's cool. I never knew you could do that. Okay, that's sweet. Yeah. Using it. It's pretty yeah. good. I have a Google Home at home, but again, my family does not use it. I'm not a big, you know, ask my phone or my Google Home something and it'll do it. For, I'm not, I'd rather just type it out or whatever. I just honestly, for me, I don't know if you've had this before, but personally with my Google Home, I've had cases where like I've just spoken to my parents and out of nowhere, Google Home just says, here's how to cook oatmeal. You put it in water for, and I'm like, I didn't ask you for anything. I didn't even say hello, Google, or hello, hi, Google, or whatever. Okay, Google. Didn't say that at all. It just starts talking out of nowhere. So at that point, like my parents just shut that thing off because huh. again, my mom doesn't. My mom was supposed to use it for a timer. It was a birthday gift to her. She was going to use it as a timer. She doesn't use it as a timer for cooking or anything. So we just we leave it off. Like we unplug it because it's just that's creepy. Just yeah, to that's, know. It's that's definitely annoying. listening on you too. That's it's like your phone. It's listening. So it's like that's that's weird. I don't know. Yeah, I, I noticed it a lot. There was a a Google commercial that was like always on when I was watching like the Raptors last year. And okay. 
like Pascal Siakam was in the, yeah, in the yeah, commercial yeah. and he always mm-hmm. said, Hey Google. And every single time it would like interrupt, it would interrupt what I was watching. It was Are you kidding me. Yeah. So that's, that's a big issue that I think Google have to deal with. Like again, voice recognition, understanding the, the owner's voice, they pay attention to the owner's voice, not and the, the privacy Siakam piece, or, the privacy piece that yeah, you're talking about sure. is the biggest issue. For sure. It's crazy that's that's where technology is man it's it's crazy you know these phones can hear you these phones can understand certain gestures that you give it again macs are like a perfect i again i've never used a macbook but i know all these small gestures that you can do it just it it makes everything and to your point you're saying question like really fast you can get things done a lot faster functionality wise it sounds perfect but again it's, it's tough it's tough to say i don't know what were you saying I was going to ask any tech you're like super excited about in the future, whether that's like VR or yeah. something else. Well, I was just going to say like a, something that pushes the boundaries of like where VR is right now, like games that push the boundary of what you're seeing now in games with VR, where you can like legitimately like feel immersed. Like you get that with VR now, but I mean like pushing the boundaries of that where let's say you can actually move around and you're not physically moving around where you are, you know, like what you see in the movies where you put a headset on or like, I remember Ready Player One, you put a headset on and then you're like a character and there's no stumbling into walls or anything. You're stuck on a chair and like, I guess you have a controller or whatever and then you maneuver around the world, but you're immersed in it. I think yeah. that's, that's super cool. Like for that to happen in any, like to play any like AAA titled games that I have right now, as VR, that would be in, insane. But yeah. to, to the, again, to the extent of not having to move around, and it look, I, I've seen so many videos of Instagram of people, you know, with their VR on, and you know, they're punching walls at the end of the day after playing the game because they don't know when the hell they're waving their, their, you know, controllers and everything. So I feel like that that would be crazy to have, like the VR that you see in movies, like in real life, that would be crazy. That would be on another level. Other techno- technological advancements? I don't know. Um, again, Neuralink sounds really cool. Maybe you could push the boundaries of that, I feel like. Because is Neuralink just strictly the c- computer can read your thoughts and just output what you're thinking? Is that specifically what it can do? Or can it do anything beyond that? Uh, I think they're still... It's not... They haven't like brought it to market or anything yet. They're still. They're still trying to, I think, make it work. Like... I don't think yeah. they're, they haven't come out and I think said like exactly how much progress they've made so far. Mm-hmm. They said, I think they said they want to start off focusing on like improving healthcare through it. Um, cool. I'm trying to pull it up right now quickly. That's cool. But uh, let me see if I can pull it up quickly. Yeah, I don't think I'll be able to now, but I think, yeah, like, uh, honestly, at least in my view, the the potential applications for this are like endless. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Well, again, you can expand the whole con that whole concept that you mentioned. You can you can take it anywhere, really. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, what made you want to get a MacBook and maybe not something that isn't a MacBook, like let's say Lenovo or something PC. I think uh ease of use and and general okay. speed okay. um yeah i feel i feel as though like i've used i've used pcs i've used macs i've yeah. used like iphones i've used androids right i feel to your point you can obviously customize a lot more yeah. with a pc or android but I feel like for for the things you do most often, I feel like Mac is just a little bit smoother, a little mm-hmm. bit more reliable, yeah. um, just a little bit overall, just faster and and more intuitive. But that's just that's just my view. Like, yeah. and honestly, I I think I've come to the point where I my, my view is that the differences are so small. Like, both of them deliver great experiences. Like yeah. Windows Ten is Windows Ten is sweet. Like, yeah, I, I don't think there's like, I think both of them, like, yeah, are really good. Right. See, because the point that I was going to make is, I, I don't know how daunting the jump is. I've only done the jump from like an iPhone to an Android. 
And I remember that just being a little bit odd just to deal with the interface and the differences with it. I feel like for most Mac users, I feel like if you're not like one of those guys that wants the doesn't mind not getting a, la- a, a new MacBook every single year. I feel like with the one that you currently have, if you let it, you know, run and you have it for like, again, five plus years and the processor and everything is pretty current and runs really well, I don't see why you, you would have no reason to maybe get another MacBook again after eight years. Like, I don't see the point in getting one constantly. I feel like if you get one, it'll last you. It's a brick. It, like I've seen, it's a, it's a pretty much a brick of a, of a, of a laptop can last you eight years you can save money just you know by not spending a lap buying a laptop every year buy one every other eight every eight years after eight years and again like with max and all the certain attachments and stuff that you need to put into it you know i know that you need all sorts of adapters and dongles and stuff i feel like it's definitely like you're spending all that money on it and when you get a new macbook i hope i hope that you could still use those dongles and all those Attachments, so you're definitely saving money too. I find if, when you transition from an old one to a new one, rather than like if you try if you transition from a Mac to a PC, all those dongles that you have that you spent you know hundreds of dollars of on, you're not going to be able to use them anymore. So I feel like the jump you're looking at it more of like from a price perspective, like how much money you put into all those products to begin with, and then you have to look at it probably from longevity as well. Like for me as a PC user, I don't see the whole point of getting a MacBook and then buying several different attachments for it. I've, I would much rather get a PC, like get another PC and not be like, Hey, okay, I spent, let's say $1,500 on this laptop. Now I have to spend another 500 on additional things. So again, it, it depends on how you look at it, but I feel like people who are using Macs would probably stick to where they are. And the same thing goes for PC really. But again, I feel like the jump, it, it's not crazy. It, it's probably daunting at first, but I feel like for the amount of money you've spent on the prospective products you have, I, it, it probably makes a lot of sense to just go with what you currently have and just update it, really. Yeah, no, that's fair. That was, yeah. that was one of the turnoffs is that the, the new Mac has pretty much no ports outside of the... It has a USB, USB has a headphone jack. It has a USB C for charging and one other USB C, um, yeah. which yeah, I definitely wasn't a fan of. But mm-hmm. I went on AliExpress. I bought a, a USB C hub that has HDMI, okay, SD yeah. SD reader, like pretty much everything. It was it was twelve bucks US, and now it now that will cover everything I need. Right. So. Yeah, that but that was definitely like, ideally you you want to still have those ports, but I guess Mac uh, Apple's like trying to trade off for sure um, hardware. For, yeah, for keeping all the it inputs, sleek yeah. and small and yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Again, for me, like as a PC user, I and again we we've talked about hard drives before, and a lot of mine run on just regular USBs. I have no problem having a USB like C ports. It, 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 again, it really depends, but for me. As long as I think I have three USB Cs, you get your charger port, HDMI. I think I I I would like HDMI. I don't. Do you do you stream stuff off your laptop to your TV, or do you do like just streaming from your phone or whatever? Not not nearly as much as I used to. These days, I would just use Chromecast. Okay, so use Chrome. Okay. Yeah. So any Chrome based app. But occasionally, I'll use HDMI. So it depends. Um, for me, I personally like to use HDMI. Like I like to stream what I have on my laptop to my TV usually. Yeah. So it depends. But again, if you're the guy that only needs you know one USB-C, but again, you have a, an adapter that has all sorts of other extensions, that's perfect too. So yeah, depends on you. But I'd like to have the actual ports in my laptop personally. Um, just because if I'm spending so much money on it, I'd like it to have everything I want. You know, at the end of the day, you're trying to get the most out of it based on what you're paying for. So, I agree. Do the do the new like Google Pixel Books and the Windows laptops? Do they still have all those ports? Do you know? So yeah, they have USB C ports. I think it's mainly yeah because a lot of their products I and mean, they just they the only attachment is USB C. It's the same kind of thing with Mac. Um, yeah, they're trying to I slim it down. Like, yeah. And maybe the the older Pixelbook they might have just regular USB USB ports, but I feel like most of those Google products they only have USB Cs. 
from what I know. Yeah, um, but I agree. It is a it is a weird trend. It feels in some ways as though it's going in the wrong direction. Like the Mac I have now that's six years old has an HDMI, yeah, has an SD yeah. card, and now I'm losing all of those. It's weird because well because you're making it up for all the hardware and how much more more capabilities they're putting into the laptop. Obviously, again they're they're trying to make space for all that hardware, and that's why they're getting rid of all those ports and all that stuff. It, it, again, they're tr- all these people that are building all these laptops are trying to push the boundaries, right? And they're pushing on hardware, and I feel like the only way to do it is you have to sacrifice on what you're currently looking at and say, hey, okay, do I really need a, use- do I really need a USB at this point? Can I maybe just rely on one sort of port instead of yeah. having several? Yeah. So it, it kind of depends on the outlook on it. And again, for me, and like I've said constantly about longevity, hardware is pretty much key. So if you have a good processor, good RAM, it should not it should last you, again, over a course of four years or like being in school for four years. Yeah. So again, it's based on preference, but it, it's interesting to see how, and again, maybe, again, with phones, you look at phones, they used to be small, they used to be bricks, and now they're big again because... You know, everything, you, you want to be able to watch videos and stuff on it. Maybe laptops will go back to that. Maybe you'll end up seeing on a Mac an HDMI, an HDMI port. Maybe they'll be able to, you know, progress the hardware to the point where they don't need all this space that they're, that they're filling up in the laptops. And they can meet both, you know, the whole idea of having a lot of ports and not risking hardware. So, and again, I'm sure all these companies are innovating to do that. But at the moment, they're looking at, okay, we need more space for all this hardware and the only way to do it is to make sacrifices. So it's a tough call, but again, they can advance and maybe in 10 years, you'll see laptops that don't need a lot of space to put all this crazy hardware they're putting into it. Yeah. In, uh, in closing Natty. Yes. Any, any topics you wanted to, anything you wanted to chat about related to this topic that we didn't get to? Mm. no i i think we pretty much covered everything um yeah we said we talked about vr i really like talking about that whole neural link that's really interesting when musk is coming up with i don't know i think to close it off i feel like if you're looking to upgrade a laptop you're based on what you want out of it and if you're looking to you know you, everybody's spending a pretty penny on, on laptops, I think, in general. If you're spending that kind of money, you know, over $400, you want something that's going to last. And I feel like, again, hardware is key. As long as your processor is like i5 or higher, you shouldn't have a problem with it lasting, you know, eight years, you know. And again, the biggest thing is the laptop itself and how, and how it's built. If you notice that the hinges are made of plastic, don't get it straight up. doesn't matter what the hardware is. Don't get it. Take it from me. Do not get anything made of plastic. If it's metal hinges, you should only base base it off of metal hinges. Don't get anything made of plastic. So yeah, I yeah, that's that's about it. I again, it's all in preference, but really, you you with anybody for any anything that you're doing, you got to do the research. Take the time to think about what you want out of laptop and. Again, try it out. I, I don't think I mentioned this at all. Try out the laptops too. Sure, you can see the laptop online and it'll look pretty, but you know, maybe it look really ugly when you see it up close. So trying laptops is also half the battle, I think, too. Um, yeah. Cool. Well, Natty, it was a it was a pleasure. Thank you for agreeing to come on the on the podcast. Thank you for having me. And maybe maybe fun. we'll do one maybe we'll do one on Neuralink in the future. Sounds good, yeah. I'm I'm all for it. Cool. Okay. Thanks, man. No problem.